this is one question which I always get from anyone who's interested to try the device. What are some of the side effects of the treatment using antioxidant yes, machine? I already mentioned those. It's just some light redness or itchiness that you might experience at first. Um, which again isn't really a sign. It's an indication that the treatment is working for you. Um, but other than that, this is really a reason why so many patients prefer iontophoresis, especially when you look at the laundry list of side effects of some of the other chemical options out there. Maybe they're aluminum based, right? And you've done the research and seen the things of linking aluminum to some other, you know, long term health effects, right? Whether it's Alzheimer's or whatever it is. But when you're dealing with iontophoresis, at the end of the day, this is, again, the science behind the scenes, it's just calcium, magnesium, potassium. These are natural things that you're introducing into your body. And for that reason, you should have no negative side effects. If you are experiencing sometimes maybe cracking of skin, it's almost too dried out. I've heard that from some patients. Maybe a sign that you're over-treating. Uh, we had talked about earlier the three-phased approach and how we recommend patients treating every other day. Sometimes patients will go, but what if I treat every day? You know, maybe the results will be twice as fast. And what if I treat for double 20 minute sessions? And, you know, again, when you, when you go outside of the recommended schedule, uh, that's where you can have maybe some of those other negative side effects like drying out and cracked skin. Uh, but otherwise, if you stick to the schedule, uh, if you get any cuts or anything like that, shaving or just life happens, Make sure you're just covering them with petroleum jelly, Vaseline to prevent the stinging. And then otherwise, make sure you're just uh, sticking to your baselines. Some patients may think, oh, well, if people see results at 10 to 12, what if I bump it up and I can grit my teeth and I'll get through it, Martin? Like, oh, this is, I see it a lot too in the Reddit groups, you know, in Reddit threads when patients will talk about, oh, I'm looking at this other device, but, you know, I heard, you know, there's cuts and, uh, other people will contribute and say, oh, yeah, it's really painful, but it's worth it. You know, it's, and oh, I, I hate it, but I hate to. Uh, Iantophoresis should never be painful. Okay. Like you should never have to grit your teeth to get through the treatment. If it is painful, th there's something wrong. Okay. And you can look at either adjusting the settings or any of the other number of factors that we had discussed. But at the end of the day, you just want to be feeling a tingling sensation. And the higher milliampere does not necessarily equal more effective. So you don't have to push. It's not a strongman contest or anything like that, right? Uh, consistency is really more the key. So whether you treat at 8 milliampere or 28 milliampere, make sure you just find the rhythm and the schedule that works for you in your maintenance phase and then just continue with that in the long term.